All right, let's build ourselves a gecko. Hello friends, hello YouTube, how are you guys doing? Rainbow here, over here, with another Nerf Mod tutorial video. And as you can see, and as you can tell from the title, today we are building a gecko. So the gecko is a fabulous blaster designed by Adrian. If you haven't seen it, check the links in the description. I have several videos on this blaster so far, and there's more to come. So this is a fantastic uh, mech in the handle pump action Springer blaster which is based on the cyberpunk pistol Lizzie image over here. So today we're going to be doing a very comprehensive tutorial on how you build yourself one of these. So whether you've gotten a hardware kit uh, or, and you've printed it yourself or you've got a complete DIY kit, before we get started, this is going to be a very lengthy video. So I'm going to do my best to make the selections in the description so then you can jump to the bits that you want to jump to. But I try to cover everything um, so that even if you have never built anything like this, you can actually use this tutorial and go build yourself one of those blasters. Over there on the computer where you can't see, we're going to be using Adrian's guide. Um, we're going to follow it to, not to the letter because there's a couple of little things that I do differently. Uh, and from the experience of having built several of these blasters, I want to share with you. So before we get started, let's talk about what's on the table. These are the 3D printed parts and they are mostly the basic 3D printed parts except for this. There's going to be a mag release and this is a fake red dot. Uh, these add-ons are available through my shop. They will be available if you, by the time you're watching this video they're not online yet. Just give it a week, they will be there. Um, if you don't use that then you just have the standard mag detent and if you don't use that you just have the standard side. Other than that, this is as it comes. Over here we have the hardware, so if you order a hardware kit through me, this is what you'd be looking at. Some sort of spring of your choice, in this case the RMP4. Uh, you got the barrels that you need, the plunger. Um, you got all the O-rings and the rubber, the springs, the heat inserts, the small screws, the screw set, and the set for the magazine. And on top and on the side, we have all the tools and accessories that we need to build this blaster. It's actually fairly straightforward, it's rather simple. So we have a standard size screwdriver for nerve screws. I have an Allen key screwdriver thing, which is really fantastic. Um, there is a file, you know, just to make everything nice and smooth. And that very size of file is actually perfect. I'm going to show uh, you where I use this and why this is so good. Um, then we've got super glue, uh, different super glue. The difference between those two, that's, that's more of a gel. So that's more of a filling super glue. We've got O-ring lubrication. I have two. Uh, darts are actually only just going to need one dart body. I will show you in this, uh, later why what this is for. I got some Teflon tape. I got a gel contact glue, which I'll use for sealing of the barrel. A pair of scissors to cut that. And we got the soldering station over here. So that's all there is. Yes, there is no soldering, but because these things are heat inserts, they need heat, uh, hence the name. So first things first, when you open the instructions, it says go check for all the parts. Um, we've checked for all the parts, they are all here. And then you obviously got to start with the heat inserts. Uh, for this, I'm going to move stuff out of the way now. So we're not going to be using this for now. We are not going to be using this. We are using some of those. We're not going to be using those. This can also go on the side for now. Um, same with the glues, that over there. You know, just make yourself some space. So 3D printer part that need inserts, this one, that one doesn't, we need that very last. Same with these, can go up the top, that one needs insert, that one needs insert, that one can go up. That one is something we need, that one needs an insert, that one doesn't, but we still need it. That one goes away, that one goes away. One of those needs an insert, this one, and that one can go away. The magazine can go completely somewhere else for now. Um, this and this, and well that we kind of need, this we don't. All right, so these are the parts that do need heat inserts. So, well, that doesn't. Um, so we've got the plunger head, we've got the bottom rail, we have the catch housing back end, we've got the turnaround. And yes, uh, this turnaround might look differently. It has this guide. It's because um, to help with the alignment of the 10 centimeter barrel, because that's shorter, that's not going to reach all the way. I originally just had like a glued in piece which kind of looked like this and the problem with this is if you're not using the proper glue which I, I did here use like glue that I can't really get it off but if 
If you're using just some sort of form of super glue, depending on the power of the blaster, the vibration might be enough that you lose this part. So in the end, um, I think this is, even though it's a more fragile design, so be careful to not break this when you install this, um, this gives it a better alignment, okay? Because it just then sits in between those. Whoop. It sits in between those two really snug and it's just a better alignment. Okay, so um, this needs two inserts. Um, this needs six in total and this needs two. So um, about heat inserts. If you have never done like these are the heat inserts. Um, honestly, I'm going to keep this because I have another big pack over here. I'm going to keep this so I can reuse it in some other kit because it's already packed. So these are the same heat inserts, so don't get worried too much. Um, about these heat inserts, what they actually are, what the name suggests, you know, you can screw into them, you sink those in with heat, they melt the plastic around them, and then they sit wherever plastic you put them, and they're fantastic because you can unscrew and screw back together the blaster multiple times without having to worry about wa uh, wearing out the threads. So if you've never done this kind of thing, I suggest you start with either this piece or this piece or this piece because those are the easiest ones um, and so you can get a feel for it. What you want to do is you locate the holes where the heat insert needs to go. In this case, um, that one obviously is for the screws, you know, because it has like a smaller hole in the bottom and that one doesn't. So what you want to do is the heat insert has a, I don't know if you can see this, probably there, there, has a smaller side to it right there. Um, like the smaller side actually goes into the part. So locate the part where heat insert needs to go to and write that. And it should sit something like this. And it does do the same thing. So it should sit straight up in there. If you find that in your print, it's kind of sort of tilted on an angle, then go take it out and maybe take an X-Acto knife and clean out this hole. Because if they're printed correctly, they should sit in flush. That is important because Otherwise, you're not going to have them inserted straight. And in all honesty, you can only do so much of correcting a heat insert when it's in the part. Eventually, it'll become too loose and you have to reprint the part. So before we get started on the heat inserts, um, you're going to need a soldering iron. And that is one of my old tips. And don't worry, it's not heated yet. It's one of my old uh, tips. Uh, there is special tips for heat inserts. If you have one of them, great. If you don't, don't worry. The only thing you got to worry about is you can see right there the point the end of the tip is kind of sticking out so to not have it in there too long because you will melt the plastic around there um, but yeah the way this works is you will heat this up um, you take this right there you make sure that it is straight sitting straight and you take this you insert it into here I'm going to do this on the table later but and then you push it down straight you don't want to wiggle around you know just apply gentle pressure not too much and the moment like it starts heating up you will start you will notice it starts moving down and that's just enough and then you push it all the way down until this is flush so let's heat up our soldering station the temperature is set to whatever material you were using that you print it with so in my case i'm using that's pla so i'm using the soldering iron at about 230 if i would do ptg i would probably use 240 um and you don't need more than that because, you know, that's the temperature this stuff melts. In fact, you shouldn't go too hot because otherwise it'll melt too quickly and you don't have enough control. All right, so how this works is we're going to start with this one. A little bit of a tricky one, but that's all right. You hold it like this. This is straight up. That's heated up. Now you place it. You gently push it down. It'll take a little while. And then it starts moving. And you just apply the pressure as you do. And you're about done. And as you can see now, this is in there nice and flush. Do not touch this. This is still hot. And that's it. So while this is still hot, there is something you can do. And you're going to see me doing this a lot of times later on. You can just take whatever long screw that you have, put in the plunger and insert the screw through here. And then see if you can just easily screw that in because then the alignment is correct. So the screw itself should not have any resistance when being screwed into the heat insert. In fact, if you feel that there's resistance, um, this one isn't quite straight and you'll end up messing up the thread in here. So it should be nice and easy, which this one is. So that's all good. Um, that's why I have this piece laying about. So this can now be set aside. Heat insert done. 
Now we're going to do these ones, as I said, they're a little bit easier. So you're going to set that one and come on, there we go. Be nice and tight. And the same idea, have it straight, push it down. So what I was saying earlier, there's a couple of parts that are a little bit trickier. Uh, in terms of trickiness, I would rate it this. No, yeah, this, then that, then that, and this is the trickiest part. Um, and we're going to go through it one by one. When you assemble your blaster, I would actually start with this. Uh, with, when you've done, when you know how what you're doing, I would start with this because then you can put the glue into the barrel and that could sort of dry while you're doing everything else. So what you want here, you got to know that these two screws are later on pointing one is pointing this way and the other one is pointing this way so you need to make sure like when this part is laying flat like so this is kind of on an angle I don't know if you can see this but this is comes from here and that comes from there makes it a little bit hard to push so what you want to do is you want to set this in here you're going to lift this up a little bit so this is a straight push and then you put that in here and you want to do the same thing with this and either you lift it like this or you do what I like to do get yourself some sort of edge and you put it on the side right there and then I'm just resting on here and I can push down that way and one thing that you can do to make sure this alignment is correct you just set up two longer screws and you have the frame ready so the moment I have put these two in while they're still warm so I can do a little bit of correction if I need to I'm going to put this in here to where they need to be right here and then I'm going to do the screw test and I'm going to uh, hand screw in the screw here and here and that should be nice and easy and then we're all good and once that side's done, do the same thing on the other side. So this is going to be a little bit quicker. Oh, I've seen that. I hope so. Um, so let's see. I'm going to start with that one. And there is two. They're both flush. So now don't touch them because they're still hot. Put them in here. See if they align. Um, so that one's nice and easy. And so that one should be the same thing. Uh, are we good? Yes, we are good. Obviously, there's a little bit of wiggle room while, you know, there's only two screws in here, but that's good. So this is a little test. You take them back out and do the other side. So now there you go. That kind of looks like a battleship. I like it. So um, that's a quick test saying that you've got all the alignment correct. And then you take them back out. Be careful not to pull on the insert because it's still warm. You can still sort of move it. And then you have this sitting aside. And there we go. Now, before we finish the other inserts, what I said I was going to do uh, in the order that I usually built this, I now actually do the barrel next because that glue that I'm using uh, takes a little while to dry. And in fact, um, I'm going to rush do it a little bit different in this tutorial, but in fact, I normally would actually do this first and have it sit uh, overnight so it's completely dry and then do the others. But, you know, just so you see how we all go. Um, what I do is with this part, you want to be careful. This is really fragile. You want to be careful to just sort of push this in straight. OK, and technically it'll be it will be enough just now, but it's not 100 percent sealed. So what I want to do get this out really carefully to not break that. What I want to do is I'm going to have some glue around this end. I'm going to have a little bit of glue around this. I'm going to have some glue on top of here and I'm going to push this in all the way. And then I'm going to use a clamp to hold this in place and then it'll be fine. All right. So this is a contact gel glue that you could, you know, does sort of do all kind of materials and especially itself. And um, we don't need this one anymore. Put it away. So coming in here, just a wee bit, not too much because you have to, would have to get out all the rest because it will get squished, um, but a little bit. Come on, there we go. Oh, there we go. A little bit along here. Also sweet. And then on around the edge, just about a bottom half, about there. Bottom half, that's way too much. You know what I mean. You can see as much as it is. So this is just that. Um, now on the side here, I didn't talk about, there's a bunch of cotton tips. This is where one of these comes in handy. 
We're going to insert this relatively straight, try to turn it a little bit, and then go straight down. Don't turn it too much because you can see the glue over here coming back out. All right, so now this is all the way in, and you can see there's a little bit of glue residue just right there, which is where I'm using this. One, two. Now you can see that there's no glue anymore. I don't know, can you see I'm holding this good? Yeah, there we are. Um, you can't because of focus. Oh, I'm sorry. But um, this is how you check. You can see no glue anymore. Yeah, that's all good. So we're done with this part. That can go in the rubbish. And because I don't have small clamps, this is what we're going to be using. Do not put too much force on it. It just needs to hold it in place, just like so. There we go. I'm going to put this aside for now. It will be resting over here and watching the video from the other side. All right. Back to the heat inserts. So this is the next, um, the next one that we do. There's going to be two inserts that are going to be going into here. And the problem here is this is where you will where you will insert that piece. And as you can see, that's already depending on your print tolerances, that's already quite tight. And because there's only two walls here, when you push down the heat insert, it can happen that you will heat up the material and actually push it inwards towards the circle, which is why I have this laying around. So um, you're pushing in the two heat inserts and then inserting this straight away while the wall is still warm, while the material is still warm, so I don't have to sand it down later. And number two just flat so then get this insert it here you can turn it around a couple of times you will still need to take this out to glue but there we go and the other thing that you want to do now that you have this now you can double check out oh, still hot careful if that is aligned correctly that should go in here nice and easy yep fair and the same thing here should be nice and easy also good if you wanted to you can actually put this together straight away but you don't have to um, and then you would need to be using the proper screws come on there, there we go All right. so now we have this um, and until this is all cold I'll leave this in there and I'm gonna set it aside one thing that I didn't mention about this part earlier is in order to, I've prepared all the parts like I normally would, um, and I would highly recommend before you start this, these holes, like especially these two, take a three millimeter drill bit and actually drill them through. So you having this like a lot easier because otherwise you, especially with these, you kind of need to screw the screw in there and then it's hard to align it with the thread. So definitely drill those holes. Okay, now we're gonna go to this part because that needs six inserts. There's two on the sides, so the one here, they are actually fairly easy. And now the tricky bit with this one is it will get four screw, uh, four heat inserts in the front here. And they all have to be perfectly aligned because otherwise uh, when you screw this in, you'll end up breaking that part. So what you want to do here is the same thing. You want to have the four longest screws ready. Yeah, so I'm going to set in all these four. And then I'm going to just put this piece on, even though like I'm missing this, just put this on here. And then I'll do the screw test here as well. There should be no resistance whatsoever. And definitely if you feel like one of the screws is not going in or is going in with like just a really lot of uh, force, do not push any further, like adjust the heat insert. Um, and a way to do this, by the way, when the heat inserts in there is by just um, putting the tip in there and then just sort of slightly lean it to the side where you need to tilt it to. Don't do too much heat in the sense where like, you know, have it corrected a little bit and if it's not enough, do it again, but don't have it in there for too long and do too much because you will melt too much material. So one, and then the screw test, have those in there, put them on here. Oops, the wrong one, that one. All right, nice and easy, diagonal, the next one. Nice and easy, 
nice and easy nice and easy fantastic all right so all of them go nice and easy no resistance whatsoever now comes the last part and that actually is the trickiest one in my opinion because you need two inserts in here and they actually come in on an angle so they don't go straight and they go like they kind of got to be like this and you can see like it's pointing out well, it's, these two are the most important ones because they connect here that's why they're on an angle and the one thing you want to do is you definitely want to drill out these holes so you can nice and easy just shove through a screw so that you can adjust these if needed and I'm pointing this out because that's where I had the biggest problems when I first put it together a gecko because these were not on proper angle so what we're going to do is we're going to do one at a time it's really important that there is no debris or print uh, leftovers or whatnot in these holes so that they can actually somewhat sit like this you see how they are on an angle tilting outwards and upwards now you got to find yourself a straight line to push this down the last corners in there just like so and then you put it here uh, take whichever one screw you want and the important thing is just that it grabs nice and easy come on perfect great um, now you were taking this back out and we're doing the other side and the same idea just have this and one screw and just have to see Oops. Come on. so that aligns nicely and now hold it so that it doesn't move and see if you can do that one as well and it should have no resistance like that whatsoever okay so these ones are good they are in there great so that's all fine um, that's very important that you do the screw test right there because otherwise you end up some point in the very later stage of the build uh, not being able to close these two shell halves and having to redo that and then you you know have all the bits and bobs assembled here so this test will be really hard to do which is why I advise you to do this early okay good now that's done uh, that's done so that was our last those are the last inserts I think yep we got the plunger we got the rail we got the pusher we got the turnaround what's over there we've got the shell we've got the slide yeah there we go that's all the heat insert so we can go take this away turn this off so next up we're gonna be doing all the rubbery stuff so the o-rings as well as the um, padding as well as everything else that needs to be glued for this I need that one and that one so um, we're also going to need this, we're going to need this. Right, let's start with the assembly of the plunger. So what you will need is one of the bigger O-rings as well as that heading. I'll put this over here. So first off, this wants to be glued onto there and if you get them uh, with my hardware kit they're 23 millimeters this is 24 so you have to have them centered if you only you could also do just a 20 millimeter thing um would be a bit easier but what i do is just make sure that there is no dirt on here and on here align this so we okay cool and then i uh, take some super glue put some super glue up the top and then drop that on there um be aware though like you kind of only have one shot at this with this kind of super glue it'll just stick this on there and you're not going to get it off all right got the super glue on it closing this and then i'm just going to lean over this so that i can make sure this is centered there we go done and just double check all the edges and then a final push just a firm push and that's it there we go now the next uh we will insert this so we need the 20 millimeter screw which is this one there is only one of them so you should be able to spot it quite easily put this in here go through there and because we aligned it earlier it's all good just till it about so here's one thing that i forgot to uh prepare earlier because i always keep it uh in the basement it's loctite and there's a couple of screws that benefit from having Loctite on them. And one of them is the plunger head. 
and I totally forgot it here. So all you want to do is have a little bit of Loctite on the tip of that screw, because otherwise, with all the vibration that it gets, it might actually, uh, you know, open itself. Yeah, there we go. So just a wee bit on the tip. There we go. That'll be enough. Close this, put it here for later. Again, realign all that. And there we go. So the beauty of Loctite is it'll keep this tight. So just screw this just about there. And there we go. Nice and tight. And the Loctite will keep it this way. That is our plunger. We later on will also use the spacer and that just sits on top of here and basically just clicks in like so. If your print tolerances are not as tight as they are, it just doesn't click, it just sits there. So there you go. That would be this for now. We're coming back to that in a second. Um, let's do this next. Uh, so remember I was talking about this one that needs to be glued in because otherwise that will move. So what I use here is the gel super glue. We apply this around here. Not too much, but also not too little. Just a good amount of glue all the way around. So that when you put the brass in, it just has a chance to completely seal. It doesn't need to be airtight. It just needs to hold in there. Okay. So there we go. That was that. Um, you can kind of f figure out the direction, um, but it works both ways. Uh, works better mm, that way. So this way goes front. And then just twist it in like so. Now it sits in all there and you can see there's a little bit of excess glue. Because it's super glue, you want to be quick in wiping this off. So otherwise you have a cotton butt tip stuck to it. And there we go. And now this can sort of sit right there. That goes in the bin. We will uh, assemble this in a second, just give this a chance to dry. Now let's do that one. So we need the small O-ring for this one and we also need our turnaround back. So just opening this, here we go. The reason why we need this is we need to make sure that this is tight. So if you just put the O-ring on top of here, depending on your print tolerance, that might be enough, but in this case it isn't. Um, that will work. Uh, but the blaster has a potential to leak just right there, which is why I always use some Teflon tape on this. And as a matter of fact, I actually use two rounds normally. Um, the test that I always do is just have this here, hold it like this. If it falls out, it's not good enough. If it keeps staying in there, then we're good. So take this off again. And probably going to do two. And then we're going to double this. like so and we're gonna put it around oops teflon tape is a weird thing to work with there we go like so i'm gonna have it sticking over the edges and start up here pushing it down all right and there we go see this is what i meant that is pretty good. Um, don't worry about it being a little bit too tight at the start because that will wear down a tiny little bit. What I will do in the end before I install it, I'm going to add some of the lube just a little bit on here so the O-ring is not rubbing too hard on the plastic all the time. But that is pretty decent. Like that's pretty good. And yeah, that's exactly how I want it. So the next thing is the seal here. And it's a similar story. Um, you could just put it there and have this on it, but depending on the print tolerances, I'm going to show this real quick. This actually, oh, that's pretty tight. Let's have some lube on there. So yeah. And now what I like to do is just sort of pull on it. No, that's actually pretty tight. Um, that's pretty good. That's the end where it's just going to sit. Okay. Um, the reason why you want to make sure that this is tight is because depending on the print tolerances within the um, frame and the slide and everything, this can actually move a little bit. It will only ever move like probably a millimeter or so, um, but I like to have this really tight so it doesn't really want to move. So this, I might actually, 
No, I'm still I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna put some Teflon tape underneath. That's my trusted tool to remove O-rings. All right. So um, one round of Teflon tape around this, so starting from the back here. Just like so. Pull that over the top. There we go. Push it in a little bit. And now apply some more lube to the very edge of which one are we using? That one. To the very edge of the plunger. Just like that. Because it's not moving, it doesn't need that much. It just needs to slip over this nice and easy. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That's good. All right, so this is sorted. Now, what did the instructions say? The instructions also say to do the... Oh, yeah, we forgot the plunger seal. The plunger seal. Let's do the plunger seal. Um, reason I don't... I do this in that kind of order because... When I have this, I'm going to test the seal on that, and then I want to leave it in there and don't have it sit about. But that's also why I have this, so I can have this, the greasy bits just sitting on here and don't mess up the workbench. So again, I was saying, I know that I need at least one round underneath that O-ring to make a nice seal. So let's do this straight away. That might be too tight. You will need a lot of lube on this one because you got to lube the entire plunger tube. All right. Get this one. There we go. So let's see. Let's put it in there. The first, yeah, that is too tight. So this would be a perfect setup for strong spring, but since we're building this for the IMP4. It's not that strong. Um, that is too much friction. So we're going to do take that apart again um, and reduce the layers of Teflon tape underneath. Yeah, that is a lot better. That's really good. So this will wear down over time as well. So don't worry if it's a little bit too tight at the start. Um, that'll be all right. You can just test it like by doing this, just pushing this down and pull this up. That's a pretty solid seal, but also push it down. If you hear the air coming around the plunger on the inside, then you should improve the seal on the inside. That's pretty good. All right, so we got this, we got that. Um, now it's time to wash our hands. This is now solid. Now let's install this. All we need to do is take the two 25 screws there here that one and that one and put them in here thing about the screws is like don't over tighten any of the screws in general um but with these ones you don't really have to over tighten it's like once it's done it's done it's not going to move as well so. so one And there we go, nice and easy. That is our catch housing. Um, so we're gonna install that into here with one, two. What's going on? Ah, okay. So three. And four, so that'll be all of the longest screws from the kit already gone. And same again, we've tested this already, so we know it's going to work. So one here, I don't tighten it all the way at the start, do diagonal, um, do the other side, and do diagonal. And still, everything goes without any resistance whatsoever, which is great, meaning that we can just sort of tighten this all up. Yeah. 
and beam. Sweet. So that's this part also done. So the instructions say next up would be installing the slide lock into the slide. Just put it here, take that pin. If you have one of my hardware kits, the pin is in the same bag as the springs are. So it's just a tiny pin. It goes in here and it just does keep this in place. The problem with this is since the pin is um, smaller than the hole is, it can actually fall out um, just as long as you have this installed. Once that is on top, the pin is not going to fall out but you will be able to hear it rattle, which is something that I don't like. So I have a different solution for that. I actually glue in that pin and I'm using this type of glue, which is a similar type of glue to that one that we used, but that just um, dries transparent. And so I'm using this, but uh, since there is different length for this blaster, I'm waiting for this to the very end until I have the body together to install to see if that one actually works. If it does work, I take everything apart and then I glue it in place. But for now, we're going to leave this out. I'm just sort of explaining this to you so you know why this is not installed as of yet. All right, next up is the catch. Now the instructions go to say drop in this uh, plunger with the spring and everything. But as I said, I have already looped this and I don't want to take this out and have it sitting there and all that. Um, there is a different way how you can install the catch. And this is what you need that worn dart for. Um, just a body, actually. So the catch spring I include in my kits is 20 millimeters. Adrian says 18 millimeters of a catch spring would be good. I actually think um, with this spring, probably 14 is enough. Um, otherwise, it's too strong of a catch. So I'm going to be cutting this down. So cut the spring till about there. This is something you can do for, um, depending on the, which spring you're using, this is something you will need to do for yourself. Uh, and also maybe, you know, figure out what kind of trigger pull you like, heavy or light, um, and maybe reduce that a little bit. If you have a stronger spring, I recommend a, a stronger catch spring as well. So I'm using this uh, pliers to just put it in there, like tweezers, sorry. Now the catch go has two sides to it. It has a round side and uh, an edge. The round side actually, just by the way, I'd highly recommend just using some 400 grit sandpaper and just make this really, really smooth. The round side goes facing forward and that's how it goes in there. And normally you would now insert the plunger and everything and have it sit there being primed and ready to go off. Um, I don't like this, so what I do is I push this down and there, take a dart, put a dart in from the front and it'll just hold the catch assembly in place as well. And now you don't have to worry about the spring being primed or everything. You just have this like that and, you know, go from there. All right, next up, the instructions say assemble this. We've done that and insert that. Okay, we can definitely do that. Um, now, we're using this spring. It'll sit in there. It goes just over the brass and this goes in here, done. Next up, we have to install this, but as I said earlier, I'd want to have a little bit of lubricant around this. Just a tad. That doesn't need to be anywhere as much as the other two ones, because that's not essentially a moving part or anything. Just a tiny little bit to prevent the O-ring from breaking too quickly. And also, you know, work help even better with the seal. Now there is two eight millimeter screws, which is the ones that you need. Um, the two smallest one are two six millimeter, they're over there. So there's two eight millimeter screws are the one you need for that. So the trick to this is you can kind of hold this like so, if you want, okay? And you drop this in here, like that, let it sit on there. And what I do is, see this? I hold it like this. So the, my middle finger actually is pushing the turnaround backwards a little bit, so it's not too much pressure on this, so I can align the screw holes easy. And my pointer finger, my index finger, is actually holding this in place. So now, just align this, and then one. Not too tight, because otherwise you break the slide. And two. Even though you might think that these screws would need Loctite, they don't. Um, you can obviously add it, but you don't have to. And there you go. This is the slide assembly almost done because we still haven't installed that piece. The instructions go next up, install this. Um, I wouldn't. I would leave this to last. I would go install the frame first because then you can go and test 
your setup. And if that setup is not sufficient enough or you need to work and tweak the seals a little bit, you don't have to unscrew that entire thing again, which is why I leave this to last. So next up, we have the frame and the trigger. About the frame, there's a couple of things. So remember I said I will explain why we need this type of file and that size. Two things. The, the channel where the trigger runs in, that is a perfect fit for this file. So you can file down the print lines in there, which makes this trigger run through there a lot smoother. That makes your trigger pull smoother. Um, so I would definitely do that. So it's just here. I've already done this on this piece. And now the same for the sides. So you can see here these walls. So that wall and that wall, as well as this and this and this and this. It's all print lines running this way where another print line part has to run this way. And so it's print line on print line. It makes a lot of noise and it also actually creates a lot of friction. So what I've done previously, you can sort of see this. I don't know. Hopefully you can sort of see this. I went ahead and went with the, this way and that 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 way. So I filed down all the inside of this as well as the corresponding parts on the turnaround. So that, that, and that wall, that, that, and that wall. So that's something I would recommend you do. That's why you have this size of file. So now we put, we drop the uh, trigger in here. Don't worry about the springs for now. Just have it sitting there. Uh, then this entire assembly is so much easier to handle now that you don't have to worry about this being primed. Comes into here from the back and slides into here. Now, I wouldn't do Loctite on these screws yet, but they will need Loctite in the end. So it's the 12 millimeter screws, four of them. And same thing. Now, this should go in there without any trouble. If you feel like you're having a little bit of trouble, then it's an alignment issue and you got to move this turnaround. Um, you can see that this can still move. And so before I tighten down any one of the four screws, I'll make sure that all four of them are in there nice and easy. And that one there. All right, since all four of them are in there nice and easy, it doesn't matter which one you start with, but what I think is a good practice of doing, tighten this one till it's somewhat tight, go to the other side, tighten that one, tighten this one. Do not over tighten this because you will break the frame. And then this, there we go. Yeah, yeah cool. So now that is that part. We got the trigger installed. Oh yeah, we've got no, no return spring on the turnaround as of now. So now you can remove this piece if you want. And you can also feel, okay, this is our trigger pull because obviously there's no spring installed yet. You don't have a return. And nice and smooth. So next up, leave this aside, is this part. And now if you have just the standard mag detent you just drop this in here a 12 millimeter screw from here and from here and you're done um but because we have this we are gonna install this um just figuring out that's the way that it's gonna sit yep nice so that means this has to go in that way oh, nope from the bottom yeah maybe there we go. Okay. And because we want to have this in place, we're going to glue this together. So put some super glue. We glue it together. So, right. So it's going to be quick with the alignment, um, but that's it. So that's now glued together, nice and easy. And so the way this works, we need a spring, a sort of catch spring for this. If you want, using this just leftover spring that I had, um, when you get this upgrade kit or when you get hardware kit for this, a kind of spring like this will be included. If you print this for yourself, um, find a spring, pretty much any stronger catch spring would do. So the way this works, this sits in here. Whoops. Come on. Stop flipping. Um, that goes in like so. 
like so. Okay, you see, now and there, that is that. Now you can see here, you have to push this a little bit to get the holes aligned. And now this is the tricky part of installing this. You drop this in through here. So the tricky part now is you kind of have to hold this down and in place and push this in at the same time so the spring doesn't pop out. And then you got to align these holes as well. And then you take the screws. Like from the original design, there's 12 millimeter screws. If you swap it to this, um, you need 14 millimeter screws because the 12 millimeter are just a little bit too short. Um, so yeah, just have 14 millimeter right there. And then screw that in there. Don't pull it all the way yet because you end up pulling the middle bit to the one side. And because you kind of want this centered, A for the looks and B for proper function. So you're gonna enter this. And now you kind of look at this and just sort of go, okay, pulling that's a little bit. So now it's somewhat is properly in the middle. A little bit more now it's pulling that way again. Now it's pulling that way again. It wants to be in there, but that is that is too tight, you see? That's too tight. So we're gonna loosen that a little bit again. Like so. Yeah, still a little bit too tight. See, like what just happened is I did tighten the one side too much, so it was kind of misaligned. Um, that's actually great. And so we leave it like this, but that's an easy tune. You can just like, tighten and loosen these screws as you need to. So that's this part of the assembly. The instructions now say put it all together and put the grip on and everything. But what we do now is we go test the blaster because that's actually just a setup that you need for testing the blaster. So these two, there's two 16 millimeter screws. That's one. second over here and also since we aligned this perfectly earlier there's no trouble closing this like so in order to test the blaster we need the magazine since we haven't built the magazine yet we do this now all right so here are the parts for our magazine the magazine hardware looks just about like that um don't get confused with this this is stuff for the rest of the blaster that we use in a second um the magazine is pretty straightforward you install that spring here it's clips in there like that um then you insert this it sits on top of the spring and then you put this together like so and you glue this together and then you screw this all into here and you're done. So um, one thing I'd like to do at this stage is just make sure, yeah, nice and easy. So the thing now is take some super glue along this line, this here, a little bit up the top here and down this line here, and then be rather quick to put it together. One thing I would recommend you do is without the glue put it together once and see how these how the tops align because if you have this too far down there's a little bit of an edge like if you it kind of wants to come up to here so that's nice together like so and also you can see if there would be any any leftover 3d print um debris or something like that in there preventing this from going all the way together but that's looking good so now let's quickly do this Lyman's good. I mean, it's super glue, it's done anyways. So there we go. Now we need those three screws. Um, there's no inserts in here, they're screwed straight into the plastic, and that's it. So put in the one side from there. Since you're screwing into plastic, you will feel more resistance, but still don't over tighten. When they are flat, they are tight. And that one here is a bit weird because it drops through this and then into the uh, magazine in the bottom. So you can see just in a second, it'll go through there. 
but that's all good that's all okay that's intended and it'll sit on there and there you go that's your magazine built done right now i'm going to get some darts and then we're going to test this blaster and then we'll be back all right the blaster works as intended and as you can see the mag release functions as it should nice and easy if you don't have the mag release and you print this yourself um, there's one little thing just right here that edge if you print this with a brim uh, there is a little bit there can be a little bit of a cutoff here where you kind of have to come in with a file and file this down a little bit just so you actually get the mag back out otherwise it gets stuck um, right let's finish the build so as i said it's a little bit it's a little bit off because I, i'd like to test the blaster in this configuration uh, so that i if i need to open there's only one two three four five six screws and i can get everything out um, but now that we're we're good let's continue with the build next one we do is we're going to install the trigger return spring so what we need is the little screws here actually i have plenty over here fantastic using those um, so we need a bunch of those uh, and there's two springs so uh, again um, in my hardware kit I have two size springs and I have a smaller and a bigger spring the smaller spring I like to use for the trigger because it gives the trigger a little bit more yeah. of a very clicky return which I quite like uh, you can swap this around um, I wouldn't ooh, I wouldn't go any bigger than this um, which is 4.5 or five millimeters uh, in size. That one we're going to use for the uh, priming handle. Now, the way to do this, because it's tiny, tiny motor screws with a tiny spring, actually, it holds the screw just like so, which is great. So now I just align this and screw this in. Just not quite all the way but so that it is okay and it's tight. Now the next one is the one up front and it'll just sit on top here and it wants to go in just so that you can still hook this one around. Now the way to easily do this is just grab your tweezers, hold this and then loop this around like push your finger nail right here, push it down, done. And now we do have a very uh, not so clicky return let me okay right so here's a funny thing i need to come in a little bit file this down a little bit more it's still there's a little bit of the elephant's foot that's on the, the trigger um that's still preventing it from going all the way forward but that's a nice and easy fix and this is why i'm doing it installing it this way so now i know okay taking this apart and looking at that i will be right back all right so as you can see very clicky trigger now that's exactly how i wanted it so all i did is sand down the little bit of elephant foot on that one a little bit more using this file and this is superb all right so next up for the working parts we're going to fit the slight lock remember we need this little pin and you just can just insert it from the top here just like so Take that little pin, do not drop it, insert it here, and remember that it can fall out. So before I do anything with this, I just want to test if the slight lock is working as it should. So we're going to have this on top of here and see how that pin kind of wants to come out straight away. Um, and there it goes. Like this really wants to jump out. So put that back in there and have this over the top. Once this is over the top, that's all fine. But the point is, you will, the problem is, you will hear this um we're going to fix this in a second so what we need now is the two shortest screws from the set which is six millimeters put them in the side here so that's one and two and so now what i want to see if like if i pull this back if that automatically disengages or not because there is uh, different sizes of this in the Tunia Ghetto Gecko folder and because of this you want this to be like a really tight fit but you also want to have it to disengage at every prime that you do and um, 
Yeah, that's good. That is fantastic. It's a perfect lock when it's right there and it releases constantly. So that's all good. So I'm not going to change it, um, but I will fix this because I don't like it. So unscrewing this again. So what I want to do with this is I take a different kind of glue. Man, I have too many glues in this video. This is essentially the same glue as this one, but it dries out transparent um, and it uh, actually dries out quicker. So what I will do is with this, I'm going to have a little dab on this side and on this side. And then I'm going to poke this through with everything installed. And then I'm going to use it cloth to wipe up the leftover glue. And then it's all good. We're just going to have it sit there for a little while and do its thing. And we're good. Just a little dab. I don't even have to push that. I just have to tilt this. There we go. And the same on the other side. So this is not an official thing to do. This is just a thing that I like to do. So like this. And now, um, good thing is I don't have to be too quick, but you don't want to have it sit for too long either. So close this, put it away. Now don't forget to install this, just like so. And then you poke through the glue and into there. Now I'm taking this, wiping off the excess glue. All right, so now with this in there, you can see I've rubbed off the glue. Um, the pin is not coming out again, um, and it's just sitting in there. And it will just keep drying in there. Um, the most important thing is that you have no glue on the outsides, which is good. Nothing here. So we can continue assembling the blaster. So now from here, what I'd like to do next is install this because you know, even if the pin wants to move, it's not. So same thing, put this on top here. Then we go and install these two. One here and one there. Come on. And we're good. Now comes all the rest. Uh, in, you know, whichever order that you like, uh, what I like to do is the bottom rail. Uh, what we need for the bottom rail are two 16 millimeter screws just right here. And that is that part. See that part of the rail goes to the front, like so, and like so. Don't have to over tighten that just tight and at this stage make sure the trigger is still as clicky as it should be because um, if it's not then that's a sign that one of the screws in here is too long or poking out somewhere so that's all good and the next will be the top spring so this spring in here so that's the last spring that we have it goes in here and unfortunately with the bigger springs you cannot do the little uh, trick that I did earlier with this screw because it will just well, no, actually, ooh, it holds up, fantastic. Um, so there's a different uh, size spring that has a bigger loop, which is where this comes in handy, where you would just sort of hold, you can still show it anyways, um, that like this, just right there, and then use your screwdriver and screw that in. So one thing you wanna do, what I always forget to make your life a lot easier when, in when installing that top spring, this hole here, because the slide is mostly printed laying on that surface, this is always a little bit too small. So what you want to do is just get a blade, pointy, edgy thing in there and just turn it around twice. Just to make that hole a little bit bigger, get rid of the uh, potential elephant foot that's in there. And all you need to do is to punch it down on the hole. So just like that, I'm just holding it. And then I'm starting to screw it in. And now it's caught and it's all good. Um, doesn't have to go all the way in just so that's solid and so the same for the top actually like this is this is really weird doing this on camera like this normally I do this with the uh, blaster on my lap so there we go having this in there like so that one wants to go very far in uh, but not 
all the way. And so you have to take this one and put it in. So similar thing, get it around there. And this is a little bit tricky with the top one. Um, I could have actually done that with screw it, but just like so, uh, helps a lot. And now that's in place. Uh, we could screw this down a little bit more. Okay. Remove all the nail polish residue. There we go. So with the spring in there and everything working fine, we're on the final stretch. Next thing I'd like to do is to get this up installed here and then the top here. So with this, it's the same deal because it's been printed on the way here. It helps if you carefully just sort of turn an exacto knife or something with a sharp corner around and that hole just a little bit. Um, take your screw and pre-insert it. Just like that. And then we're going to put it on there. It'll just rest in here and screw in the front here. Just like so. A really awkward angle. And done. with these little ones, you want to be careful to not over tighten them because if you do, you'll strip um, the holes and then they don't hold anymore. So this um, has a crevice right there, goes on top of here. So it'll sit right there. And um, yeah, should be all right from my experience to just put a screw right there. Three screws up the top here, done with this one, really nice. And now it is time to install that fake red dot rear side, the add-on, uh, the optional add-on that this build is going to get. Uh, it screws in with the same two screws and it's all the similar things applying. This one actually the holes are big enough. Yep. Nice and easy. Let's just align that. that there. Just right there. So this is really nice. I like the profile of this. That's really cool. Um, I don't know if you can see through this, maybe you can. And so last but not least, the grip. It'll slide just on there and it'll take four screws and it'll be done. And there we go. This is the Gecko Complete magazine inserted. This is it. Now, if you're wondering why there's three screws left over, those are because these two, we swapped for 14 millimeter screws in here. And that one, it was an original screw set. That one was on the old design of the pusher. You had to screw in the pusher head, which is why this one's there. Um, the new hardware kits are actually, well, you know, packed differently, so they don't have that access screw. But these ones are because we swapped them here. So one last thing to do before we're done with this build, and this is applying Loctite to the turnaround screws. So these four screws, they will come loose because they get all the vibration from the spring. They will come loose. So we're going to apply some Loctite. The reason we didn't do this at the start is because we didn't know if we had to open it again in terms of checking the seals and everything. But since this is working fine, we're now going to apply some Loctite and we do this one at a time. So I'm taking out one screw at a time, applying some Loctite, putting the screw back in. And remember, to, if when you close them, don't over tighten them just till they are tight. The Loctite will do the rest. You don't need much. This is plenty, actually. Just put it in there. and then screw it back in until it's tight, done. And if you remove it one at a time, you don't have to worry about uh, the alignment because obviously three screws are still holding it in place. So now this is our Gecko mag release, nice and functioning. The thing about this mag release is, I'm just throwing this out there in case if you want one, uh, you got to get used to pushing this backwards because you kind of want to push it upwards because that seems to be your natural motion. So it's like from sitting here going up, but it's not going to do anything when you go up, you got to go back. So you got to learn how to engage with that knuckle on this and go back. If you know what you're doing, it's actually really nice and easy. And then it's a gravity drop. Just catch it. There we go. 
And there we go. That's the gecko done. This is one working gecko. And it's actually, I quite like the color scheme. Like this is a really nice choice of colors. And I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Even though I'm kind of not following Adrian's instructions to the letter, um, is I'm just doing the things in the steps in the order. And I hope that I could explain this to you. I hope it's helpful for you to build your own. Or if you now, um, if you're thinking about getting a DIY kit, you now are comfortable enough to put it together on your own. Again, um, you can apply Loctite to uh, more of the screws, those ones, for example, to secure them, but you don't really need to. And so this is how I assemble the geckos and this is all the preparation and stuff and the work that I put into the blasters I built. If you want to get your hands on a hardware kit or a DIY kit or a completed blaster, please be aware of some wait time. But if you want to get your hands on, a, uh, on any of this, link to my Etsy shop is in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Other than that, thank you guys very much for watching and sticking around to the very end. Shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. If you want to become a patron, link is in the description. And other than that, happy modding, happy nerfing, happy building. Love and sunshine.